talking to the farm. On the show this week, brokers, drag and tag rights and call input options. They all get SEBI stamp of approval. But every silver lining comes with a cloud. States win, developers lose, and we may have a new definition of works contract. The good news is that earlier this week, SEBI notified that contracts for preemption rights, including ROFAs, contracts for drag and tag along rights, and call and put options are permitted in shareholder agreements and articles of association. The not so good news? This is prospective. Nonetheless, this is a big positive development for joint ventures and private equity investments, both of which are often accompanied by such rights and options. But as I said, every silver lining comes with a cloud. So we don't know yet if RBI will play ball with this. To talk about this issue, I'm joined today by Ashwat Rao of Amarchan and Puneet Shah of KPMG. Gentlemen, to both of you, a warm welcome. Let me start first by talking about the conditionalities imposed on call and put options by SEBI in its October 3rd notification. A minimum holding period of one year after the contract is entered into, the price to be in compliance with all laws, and the contract to be settled by actual delivery of underlying securities. The first and third, Ashwat, seem to me to be rather benign. The price bit, are they referring to a specific provision or is this just an umbrella provision? FEMA guidelines which refer you back in certain cases to SEBI regulations as well. So price has to comply with whatever and requirements apply to pricing effectively. So DCF and SEBI, those that's are the only two methodologies as of now. So applied. everything that's in the October 3rd notification seems clear, seems above board, seems easy to understand and the conditions are benign. Do you both agree on that? Absolutely. I, I think it makes complete sense. It's makes a very, very, sense. very, very positive. So the only question now is that several of such call and put options that came with fixed returns and fixed prices and therefore were in a sense uh, debt masquerading as equity, they were objected to by RBI and the question stands whether RBI will now permit these to go through or will they have their own set of conditions that applies. Ashwat, how do you read this in terms of the RBI question mark that's still open? I think if you look at the SEBI notification, clearly I agree with Puneet is a positive step. Uh, it is entirely conditional upon FEMA. Hmm. So, lot remains to be seen in relation to what RBI now does. Right. If you look at it from a health business perspective, I think it will be great if the RBI now comes out and actually articulates hmm. whatever the conditions may be, articulates the circumstances in which it as the exchange control regulator will have a problem with any of these options. Now, okay. historically, uh, those have been in the context of the fact that many of those options were for fixed returns, hmm. right? And consequently, it was believed that there was no equity risk really that was there. Uh, cons because there was no equity risk, it was effectively foreign investment, yeah. which was actually an ECB, right. in violation of the ECB norms. Right. Now, one simple way of the RBI possibly addressing that concern is to turn around and say that any uh, valuation has to be linked to the fair market value of the company at the time the option is exercised right. and say that as long as that condition and the pricing guidelines are met, it's a valid uh, you know option and that will clear a lot of the problems that are there. But from a private equity perspective, Milka, the one problem that I still see subsisting is private equity investors typically have these put options as a last resort. They really yeah. don't want to you know sell back to the promoter. They want you know an IPO exit. They want a strategic exit. They want many kinds of exits and typically it says the agreements would say that if for five years I don't get an exit, hmm. right? Then you as the promoter will buy me out, right. right? Given that the valuation is typically done on terms that are, you know, dictated by the promoter, one of the understandings which is commercial common all over the world is to basically say that I as the private equity investor will go out at fair market value provided that there is a minimum. So now, I need some price protection. I need some price protection. And if the uh, notification basically says any kind of fixed return is, you know, ECB, even a minimum floor that mm. is prescribed, which is Will commercially not be required, kosher according to the RBI, will be invalid. Effect. There has always been a controversy in terms of if the if the formula pricing is provided in the in the contract. In that case, whether that is considered to be a fixed return or not, that always been a matter of debate. Right. And I'm not sure how RBI is going to deal with that situation, because is there's a fixed price, our and therefore there's a fixed return, and therefore there's an ECB, and therefore put call option is invalid. Now, there is a formula pricing, which again leads to a particular return or a fixed return. Hmm. Now, how they are going to deal with that, that's going Look, to be a Any formula pricing which has DCF in it 
uh, DCF can be manipulated. We know RBI has not prescribed any specific methods for DCF when Absolutely. it comes to unlisted. That's correct. So you can still arrive at a protected price, so to speak. Exactly. That's the point I'm making. And therefore, whether RBI But then you're part of that at, group uh, of people that, you know. That's right. I don't know. I and, mean, and, and therefore, if RBI takes a negative view of that, in that case. So there should be no formula, there should be no price protection, that's there should be nothing. That's possibly the only grounds on which the RBI will approve that's, of this that, That's correct. That that's could right. become a big challenge to my mind. So we need to see the wording of what RBI puts out and I understand that there is going to be a notification because RBI is been, has been part of these consultations which as we know have been going on for two years with the finance ministry which on how to clear the road for call and put out. I, I think right. that's going to be very, very critical because two regulators talking to each other is something which we have found to be very rare. Look, they refer to FEMA in this, so I'm sure RBI is on board and I'm sure what we'll get from RBI will be just as sensible as this. And from a foreign investment point of view, this notification has to be followed up from clarity from the RBI sure. for it to be meaningful. Otherwise, okay. absolutely. Otherwise, you are back to square, square one. one. Oh, where you are. Cool. So we'll be waiting to hear what the RBI says and hopefully they will allow for some degree of price protection but not a fixed return so that's to speak. Right, that's right. But even if they don't allow either, at least the bulk of the transaction should be safe. Let me come to the issue of what the Companies Act 2013 allows and doesn't allow, right? They have allowed free transferability but they've also said that you can, between two parties, have a contract or an arrangement that is in respect of transfer of securities and this shall be enforceable as a contract. Uh, I am just curious to know whether this whole issue of call and put options when it comes to uh, both public listed as well as public unlisted companies, does it have any implications in terms of being embedded in the articles of association or not? The approach, you know, going forward I think will still be to put it in the articles. There are challenges but people would still try and put it into articles. But, but then wouldn't you be violative of 58 which says they should be freely transferred? But 58 too now has a provision. I think the new act goes a long way towards giving you comfort on enforceability of preemption rights but it uses the word enforceable and enforceable has two meanings. One is enforceable in specific performance, enforceable mm -hmm. in damages, right? In so far as enforceable in specific performance it means that if you transfer in violation somebody should be able to injunct the transfer, right? Now, if it is not going to be there in the articles, whether a court will injunct because there is no constructive notice to the buyer is a big question mark. So, that is why I said, I mean, irrespective of how this pans out, I think this issue will have to be decided in the context of is enforceable both in specific performance and damages or is it only damages? Because if the outcome of this interpretation ultimately when it goes to the Supreme Court is that it is only going to be in damages. I'm not sure what value it's going to be add. It's not. It's not going to be adding too much value because it's spilt milk. Damages is not going to be adequate remedy. I mean, today in the context of any partnership, strategic right. or private yeah. equity, absolutely, the key is to injunct and prevent the transfer. Yeah. So you will definitely try and put it into the articles and try and fight it out on that basis. But even if it is in the articles, there's no guarantee that it will be injuncted. It's just that you have a better case for it. So, Manja, just to add, I think I think you are absolutely right. There seems to be a contradiction within companies. So, if you agree with him, let me. Yeah.